Mike Fraparota. Uh, great to have him back. He just did a talk for us in the shop on some of his bucktail work. And today we're going to downsize a bit and do some wet flies. So, how's it going there, Mike? Good, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Sunny uh, Thornbury. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Just counting down the days till opener, right? Yeah, I know. Totally, man. Like, it's all I can think about right now. The boxes are fully uh, stocked. I'm just thinking of excuses and what to tie and keep them, you know, keep, keep the tying going. Uh, yeah. But yeah, today, some, some soft tackles. I know you're a big fan of soft tackles, Chris. Oh, I love them. Yeah, super yeah. underrated. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think I, honestly, I think I was introduced to soft tackles by you. I don't know if you remember, but way back. Really? Yeah, totally, man. Uh, way back. Uh, when you were working uh, somewhere else uh, initially. And um, I remember coming in and you were like, I, I was talking about dry flies and stuff like that. First, when I was first introduced to into fly fishing and then you said, what about soft tackles, man? And you went and showed me the bin and showed me some soft tackles. And then honestly, man, I fell in love ever since. And I got, I don't know how many partridge skins now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, big fan, big fan. No, just so versatile, right? Like, I think that's the thing totally. that gets a with soft tackles is people think, you know, fish them down across, and it's a way to catch small fish, but it, like, you can dead drift the things, you can just nymph the things if you want. You can fish them as, like, an emerger at the time, dense enough, and, you know, grease them up a bit. You can fish upstream soft tackles where you fish them like a dry fly upstream of you, like, fishing like a crippled insect, or just the classic swing and i've got some great fish on soft tackles and and any time of day you know like when you're when you're dry fly fishing that's right it, it you know it suits the name of the the stream here but uh you know when you're dry fly fishing you're waiting for a rise or you're waiting for a certain time of day um mm -hmm. wet flies it's kind of like you can fish during the hatch you can fish free hatch you can fish them as a streamer uh there's just it's limitless right so um I don't know. I just think and like, you uh, don't have to limit yourself to imitating bugs with them too. Like tie totally. large soft tackles and imitate small bait fit. I don't know. Yeah. Well, like, like swinging, uh, you know, for steelhead, swinging flies for steelhead, uh, you know, they're going for uh, minnows and stuff like that. That's what, that's what you're trying to imitate crustaceans and stuff. So, um, I mean, th this, this stream is going to be dedicated to kind of like trout flies, but I mean, uh, it's the same kind of concept when you're swinging steel for steelheads, similar kind of process, similar kind of tying methods. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I can't wait to get, yeah. get into and I think, this. Like, the other thing I think something to talk about a lot too is like, you think of how we approach a river so much of the time when you're talking dries and nymphs and think about it, you're just covering like one slot at a time, right? You nymph upstream, you dry fly upstream, and the fly tracks the current down in a line. But it doesn't mm -hmm. cover the width of the river. And so especially in rivers where they're kind of nondescript and you get fish kind of sitting all over, like the wet fly swung. Great point. Water, right? Yeah, great point. I mean, shallow water, right? Like you can you can yeah. fish that whole run, like you can that you couldn't nymph, but you could, you know, that you could swing pretty effectively. Uh, some shallow stuff. So I you know what? It's just something I think a lot more people should start putting on their line um, in areas that you can fish a tandem rig two is best um yeah it's just uh you know it's just something you gotta you gotta try a lot more people should start doing i have a, like a dedicated wet fly box that comes with me you know anytime i'm out fishing so uh, yeah, I don't know. yeah. Well, maybe we'll get in a little bit more and like fishing the things as we go here but uh oh, totally. it's here for fly time so i guess so much to aim for. <laughs> yeah so we want to get into it yeah let's do it um just a reminder to everyone, everyone's on mute right now. You're welcome to ask questions throughout. Just use the chat function or keep everyone on mute just to avoid any uh, busy audio. And yeah, I'll just throw us over the mic and we'll, we'll go through it. Sounds good. Okay, let's, uh, let's switch the cameras here. Okay, so first fly, the three flies I'm going to be tying, uh, they're going to be catered towards the start of the year. So I'm going to start with a Hendrickson and then I'm going to go a BWO uh, wet fly. And then I'm going to go uh, with a caddis uh, kind of imitation uh, just, you know, to prep us for opener. I know everyone's, you know, getting excited for it. So these are three patterns. You can start, you know, the fourth Saturday in April, you can, you can bring them out with you and, you know, you can fish them 
that day. Uh, so this one's going to be on. Uh, I, I tie a lot of my wet flies on size 12s. Uh, this is a Hendrickson. Uh, it's a size 12. I would fish it. I tie it kind of short on the hook. So it, it ties down to a 14. Um, I tie them on 14s as well. But uh, I love a size 12 wet fly uh, hook. I just think it's pretty standard over through the board. Uh, it's not too big. It's not too small. Uh, it gets the fish's attention. That's a good hook. This is an S60, I believe, by Mustad. Um, portable hook, great wet fly hook. Uh, you know, it's just a all round good hook, good nymph hook too. Um, and then for thread, I'm going to be using this is um, 14 knot and Vivas in black. Sorry, Mike, don't want to cut you off there when you're on a roll. Yeah, um, no worries. Thing. Can you actually, um, I don't know what you're wearing, but are you able to tuck your headphones cords? Like, oh, yeah, true, true, true. I was thinking about that. Yeah, I want to. Just give us a, a good cleaner background. Right yeah, yeah. We've just gone through so much work to make everything else. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. All right, is that good? That's better, eh? Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so 14 knot Vivas. Um, I tie this, my dries, my nymphs. Uh, it's a great thread. Uh, and I just start right behind the eye there. Give it about an eye back and just work your way back to. Uh, and, and when I when I stop my wet, I, I actually make a little bit of a shorter body on my wet flies. So I stop, you know, normally on nymphs and stuff, I'll stop right at the barb. On my wets, I, I stop between the point and the barb. That's kind of my, it's just something I do. I'm, I mean, you can do whatever you want. That's just the way I tie. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is going to be a Hendrickson wet fly. It's called the dark Hendrickson wet fly. Um, and now for a tail, I'm just going to be using, it's, uh, it's from a, a dun neck. And I just use a stiff barbs from the dun. Kind of looks like that. It's just like a dry fly hackle. But I find really stiff stuff, and, then, and that's what I'm going to use. You know what? I got lights here. I don't know why. Let me turn them on. There. Should lighten things up a little bit. There we go. Yeah, so really stiff, dry fly hackle. Um, pick off maybe about five or six fibers or so. These are really quick flies. You can bang out a ton really quickly. So I just, uh, for measurement, I do about a hook, uh, a hook length, hook shank length for tail. And just pinch wrap. Some guys go shorter. I like a little bit of a longer tail. It's kind of like just that, you know, stage right before they become an adult. So they're almost a dry fly. And yeah, this is a super simple fly. So just, um, I'm going to be using squirrel, squirrel dubbing. Um, it's in tan or just natural. Um, very little amount of dubbing. And just dub that on. I love squirrel dubbing. I use it quite a bit. Hair's ear squirrel. It's kind of like staple for my for my flies wet flies nymphs kind of thing and just no ribbing nothing it's just going to be dubbed all the way up kind of like a nice tight dubbing noodle and it's a pretty quick fly so just work your way up Now for soft tackles, you, I mean, there's a ton of different birds to use for soft tackles. Mainly, like I was saying before, partridge, big time. You know, it's like, I think it's the most, arguably probably one of the most popular soft tackles for, for wet fly hackle or soft tackles. Um, hen is a big one too. I've, I've honestly, I wasn't a big fan of hen up until recently. And uh, I, I fell in love, I love hen. Uh, it's not too expensive. You can buy a ton of different colors, ton of different variations. 
the one thing is it's not modeled. So it's usually just one still color. So I, I try to incorporate some sort of modeling or kind of like a hot spot in my flies when I tie with hen. So in this case, it's going to be all pretty dull for the most part until we get to the wing. Um, but yeah, so for the, for the soft tackle, I'm going to be using a hen. This is a medium done. Um, and that's how I prep it. So the original, the, the feather kind of it looks like this to start. You know, it's kind of hard to see there, but you only really use the top portion of it. You really want all the fibers to be kind of like the same length. Um, I think that's super important. Uh, and try and get, you know, for length, for length, the body size, you know, maybe max the hook, the hook shank length, but, you know, don't over, overdo it with size. I think that's important with soft tackles. Cord up my thread. And then, you know what, I'm going to cut tip off first. I'll cut a little notch in there, triangle. And then you want to hold it straight up. I have a little trick after for holding these fibers back, but the hen is pretty good at doing that. Partridge is a little stubborn when you're going to fold these fibers back, but that's what you kind of want to spend some time doing that. And then it'll wrap a lot better. And so you just get a pair of hack pliers. And we're going to wrap it twice around the hook. And they've genetically modified a lot of these hens. That stem is super, or the, the rachis, it's super thin and makes it really easy to tie with. Partridge is not the same. I love partridge. It's my probably one of my favorite soft tackles, but it's just, it's tough to find right size and it's tough to find, you know, a, th a stem that's thin enough as well. So you got to take that into consideration when you're tying with it. But try and if you can, hen is the way to go, I believe. So we'll just tie it up to the front there. Make your way back right touching those, that hackle where we ended. And now for the wing, most let flies, I mean, they got, they got a tail, they got a body, ribbing for the most part, hackle, and then a wing. If you, if you can do that, you can tie any wet fly. Some, you know, they spare the wing, some spare a tail. But for the most part, if you can do a tail, body, Tackle wing, you're good to go. Um, now for the wing, I'm going to be using this is a wood duck, and it's a lemon wood duck. Uh, it was pretty tough to find for a while. You got to wait till hunting season comes around, and and uh, you know guys harvest the birds, and then there's a surplus of it, and then it's gone for a while. So if you can find it, pick up a bunch because it's going to go quick. Um, and so now I just tear off the, the bottom fluff. And what I do is I, you're going to need quite a bit. So I tear off, uh, about one whole side of the wood duck. And then what I do here, so I grab that amount and then I snip off curlies and then I roll this between my fingers kind of like you're tying like a rolled muddler or something I roll that and then you'll tie that in for a wing so for a wing it's going to be about I, I stop the wing about halfway up the tail so Halfway up the tail length, cord my thread, 
pinch and just drop it. Couple in front and then we'll snip that off. Yeah, that looks good. And now when you clean up the head, I always, this is a Davy McPhail trick, uh, but he wraps from the eye back and you go through those cut ends, clean up the head a little bit. And then a whip finish. Super simple. Hendrickson wet fly. You can get, have a few in your box, start the season. Hendrickson should be coming off midday, 11 to 2 kind of time. And throw that, and you should catch some fish for sure. But yeah, that's a little dark Hendrickson wet. I love that's that pattern. Funny. It's yeah, simple. super simple. Would you agree that the difference or the difference between uh, partridge and hen is I find partridge I can get to stand up a little more and maybe have a little bit. You find the same. Sorry, you cut out there, Chris, but uh, what were you saying? The partridge oh, yeah. stands up a little I don't bit know if more? You'd agree. I, yeah, I find that partridge for me, I can get stand up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And I find sticks back a little more on me. I'm not sure yeah. if I find the same. Totally. I think hen, it's super soft hen. Like I find the partridge is kind of like a happy medium. You can find really soft partridge, but I find when it, the softer the partridge gets, the more like faint the modeling is on the feather. Yeah. I don't know if you find the same. I, I'm yeah. pretty picky about my, my partridge. I like, I look for that. I want that really sharp modeling so i want the black and the white to be kind of you can tell that there's a separation versus you know a feather that's pretty soft that separation is really soft I, you know I, I look for the really sharp um we'll get into on the next fly i'll show you uh, uh the feathers that i like and some of the feathers that i don't like but yeah so that's size 12 it's really i tie it in like a kind of a size 14 so but yeah great pattern uh next uh, this is going to be a BWO. Um, and again, I, I'll tie it a size up. So this is a 14. I tied it to kind of like a 16. Um, BWOs, I mean, they get real small, but I don't have any problem with the, with the 16. Actually, I fished this fly quite a bit when I was out west. I, I was out west in the fall fishing for cutthroats. And... They were going for, I had parachute Adam size 18. I wasn't really prepared. I only had a few on me and I ended up losing all of them or, you know, the destroyed by fish and stuff. And I didn't know what else to fish and they stopped hitting dry flies. And I threw this, this fly on and it, it, it was lights out. So uh, a little sneaky pattern that I, you know, I tied for fish here and it worked well out there. So, uh, I thought I'd include it in this, in the presentation. Um, so yeah, again, this is size 16. This is a, a 230 hen at cook. Um, it's a size 14, but we're going to tie it in a 16. And I got to switch threads. Again, it's going to be 14 aught vivas. And this one's going to be an olive. I love the 14 aught. Chris, do you tie, do you tie with uh, do you tie with sixteen? Just really on dry flies. Yeah. Eh? Okay. Yeah, I just uh, some of the dries that I tie require like quite a bit of work um, folding stuff over and, and that on the front of the fly. So I, I love the sixteen when I'm in tight like that. But most of my nymphs and stuff twelve odd I find it's kind of my happy spot. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's great head though. Yeah, I love this 14. I got to get more of it actually. So I probably, I'll probably put an order in pretty soon for it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so 14, this is an olive. And same thing. So I start always about an eye back and just work my way back. Stop a little short. 
Uh, for a tail on this, we're going to be using that same. Um, it's kind of a medium done neck, dry fly. You get any stiff kind of done hackle will be fine. You can use uh, Coq de Leon or whatever. That stuff's great. Wood duck. I use wood duck for tails too. We were talking about how earlier wood duck can be kind of hard to find sometimes. And I agree, you can be. Um, would you say a decent sub for, the, for wood duck would be something like um, a dyed lemon teal or teal, like yeah, mallard plant or something? Yeah, mallard. Mallard's great. I, I know there's some, they, they dye mallard, uh, some mallard feathers like wood duck. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. There's something about wood duck. It's that modeling, man. <laughs> I know I'm going to be talking a lot about modeling here. Um, I'm just obsessed with it. You can use this too on the, uh, on the partridge. Um, this is a, a skin here. I don't know if you can see that very well, but right at the end, they have uh, kind of longer feathers. Use that for tailing too. There's not many to use, but they're pretty good. They're stiffer. Uh, it's a soft tackle still, but you can use those. Um, but yeah, that the teal mallard, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff you can use for tailing. Uh, but yeah, I like the stiff stuff. Uh, it's the medium done dry fly again, same thing, uh, hook shank in length. Uh, I like it a little longer than usual. It's up to you though. And then we'll bring it back just before that if there was a barb just before the barb. And now um, I'm gonna be using a, so a rib on this one, and this is gonna be, uh, it's just a chartreuse wire, small wire. You can use any kind of chartreuse thread. I just want a kind of a contrast between the, the olive and the, and the body and then the rib. I want, I want to be able to see that rib. And I just tie it in on the side closest to me. And then we'll make our way back. Stop about the hook point. And what I do here is I want to kind of create a hot spot with that, with that wire. So I do about three wraps right at the base. Who knows? Maybe the fish think it's a, like a caddis or something too. So. Why not? I do about three wraps and then put that back in my, my material clip and then work your way back, right back to that wire. Uh, for the body on this, I'm gonna be using uh, Hair's Mask. And I, I love, I don't buy the packets of, of dubbing for Hair's Ear, I always buy the masks. I just find I like deciding where to pick my dubbing off the mask and I find the packs, it's just, you know, it's whatever. So always I, I buy all different color masks. I think it's the way to go. And I just pick it right up from the base of the ear, kind of into the, you know, between the eyes kind of thing of the, of the mask about that much. Just lightly dub it on. This is an olive mask. I always dub a little bit more than I think I need. Can always take it off. And then just work your way up. Now he's trimming it down a little bit. And then when you wrap your wire, I counter wrap it. It's a little awkward, but 
I feel it helps for the durability. Do about three or four wraps. There's a crappy pair of scissors to snip it off. And flatten that with your nail. And you're gonna, I'm only gonna, this is where I'm gonna use the partridge, but it's very little, very sparse amount of partridge. So again, this is how I, I prepare. This is an olive partridge feather and I prepare it like that. Um, I think it was gonna show. So that's, you know, that's a partridge feather that I really like the modeling on. And this is one that, I, you know, it's not the greatest. I picked it out earlier and I was like, nah, I don't really like the modeling on it. So that's when I don't really like the modeling. I don't know if you can see that the best. But... Yeah, it's just faint. I, I wanna see that black and white, that separation. And now a little trick um, with the partridge is I get it in my hackle pliers, just the tip like that. And what I do is I, I, I preen them back before I set it because they're a little stubborn on the hook. And I find sometimes when you're preening them back, while it's on the hook, you pull it out. So I preen it back now like that with it because the weight of the, the pliers kind of help make it a lot easier. So that's already done. And now I take it out of the pliers to tie it in. See, when you're using such a little amount of fibers, it gets a little difficult, but there we go. And so I'll snip that V out. I'll tie that in. So we're only gonna get about two turns now see, I've already preened it back. So it's, it makes it a lot easier when you go to wrap it. See, it's already done. Hackle pliers. We'll probably only get a couple turns here. If I'm lucky. It's good. I go really sparse with, it's just hard to find right length partridge, to be honest. And with the right modeling and all that, it's just, it gets a little difficult. So, you know, the feathers are at a premium. You gotta use what you can. And then I pull it, you know, straight through the eye like that. And I tie it up just to behind the eye. And then snip it off. Bring it back, work your way back up. And now here we're gonna be using uh, some duck slips for a wing. Uh, and this is just, it's mallard. Um, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm using uh, mallard slip. I kind of wanted to show where you can where it where I take it from the mat. It's about the bottom third of the of the feather is the best I find the best uh, part of the feather to pick from. And uh, I'll show you a little trick on how to find the right length uh, for a wing. You can 
pick however you want, but this is what I do. So I find a hook uh, similar to the size that we're using. Um, and then what I do is I, I use that hook. I don't know if you can see that very well. But I use that hook to gauge the length of slip wing that I'm going to use. So that's what I'm going to be using there. Pretty cool trick, actually. Yeah, just so you get, you know, the right the the right slip length for both. I find sometimes you're always, you know, I pick one out of one feather and then I go for the next, and then you go to pair them together, and they're two different sizes, and you got to take a couple, you know, fibers out, and it's just a mess. So again, just use that. To get it in my hackle pliers like that, and then, and then that picks the the length. It's a little long. Yeah, so those are the slips. And now when I tie in my slips, some guys, they go like concave in. I want that color. I want that done to show. So I go back to back, kind of like the way you would do a dry fly. How do you tie yours in, Chris? Do you tie them in so they're curving into each other or away? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Sorry, forget I was on mute. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't hate it when they actually flare away a little bit on that fly for some reason. Yeah. Yeah, I think on the wets, like a lot of guys, they do it curving in. I don't know. I just think uh, curving away. It's a. It's almost a dry fly, right? So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just, I, I don't know. That's the way I do it. The uh, only thing I'm most picky about, I think, is probably just the short side on the bottom. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And then when you're tying in slips, I mean, I'm not a master at tying these in. Some, you know, it's all over the place for me. Chris, you're you're an amazing, you tie in some great slips. Um, but yeah, I, I find when I tie them in, uh, just, I, I want it, you want it as close to where you're tying it in as possible find like if you're angling it up or you're like you have a space between the slip and the and the hook that's when things you run into trouble so kind of like just tighten butt it right up to that hook i feel like there's not too much info on just tying in slips if it's you know it's not easy super classic way of tying but not how many people talk about it very much yeah you know i think some of the best resources that i've found for that are written actually books yeah the pressure that you're applying and stuff but, totally yeah. You know, or you just like you watch, you know, videos of certain guys, you know how to do it really well over and over and over again. Just, you know, soak it, soak in as much as you can. But, you know, I, you tie a lot with them, you get a little bit better, but it's just all over the place. Depends on, you know, how the quality of the slip, where to pick it from. You know, um, there's just, you know, a million different things. But anyways, uh, I find you keep it nice and tight to the hook. Um and then I cord my thread up a little bit and I pinch wrap and then just straight down. And straight down. Hopefully I got my length right. But yeah, that's okay. I'm going to do a come in front here and then just snip off that excess. And then we'll do that Davy McPhil trick again and always tie through those butt ends to finish it off.
Eh, it might be a little bit long, but that'll work. And then, then just a quick whip finish. I love that fly. Gonna be fished a bunch early season, late season. I mean, it could be a caddis, like I said, it's got that hot spot in the back, but it's a great fly. And then I always varnish or, you know, put some UV on the head. I'll leave it like that for now. Varnish after. Yeah, it's a great pattern. I like it. And do you do uh, wings on most of your wets? Yeah, it's like 50-50 um when i feel like it uh any kind of like done I'll, I'll use the wings um i think caddis for the most part i use i just go straight hackle i, I don't use much for wings what about you what do you do i don't really do wings on many of mine I, I do wings maybe on some like lock style like still water dry flies mm -hmm. but um yeah thinking about my box i think most of them are more kind of just you know, partridge and orange, parts of yellow, that kind of style stuff. Just super quick, easy ties and you know, yeah, disposable, yeah. disposable. A honestly, lady. honestly, Chris, I think like you know what these flies have been around for you know hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. I, arguably, the the origins of fly fishing started with wet flies, and um, I don't know. I just think there's a reason why they've been around for so long, and um, you know the way they started was with with wings i just honestly i'm not i'm, I'm not the greatest at tying the slip wings but i'm, tr I'm forcing myself to learn just okay. because it's you know it's the way they've they've always done it and uh i i know as soon as you you cast you do a couple drifts and they and all the you know it separates and all that but it's uh it's fun to learn how to tie them make your flies look pretty because i think you know when you when you look in your box and you see a pretty fly you know you're more likely to pick it out of the box so that's my theory, at least. And for anyone looking to like get into tying like slip wing cast style steelhead flies and stuff, these are way easier to learn on than doing totally. a scale too, right? So great jumping off point for people. Yeah. And I think, you know, when you're tying it on a small scale like this, when you go to tie those steelhead flies, it's a breeze, <laughs> you know? It's like, you know, you go from tying these little slips to tying massive ones. So no, it's a good transition. That's a, it's a good point, Chris. Um, fly number three. Uh, this is going to be a caddis. Um, just a, a red tag. This is a super simple fly. And I, I, um, I, I tie, actually, I fished a lot of this for brook trout. Uh, not too much brown trout water, mostly just brook trout. And, and then they smash it. I find brook trout, specifically with wet flies, they hit like the most like crazy flashy flies, you know, like doesn't matter what colors you're using, uh, you know, how big it is or whatever, they smash wet, wet flies swung, you know, and uh, it's just a fun game. Uh, you get that, you know, that tug and you just wait. It's a super simple, relaxing way to fish. And um, I find this fly in particular, they, they hit quite a bit. Uh, this is going to be, again, this is that S60. Uh, it's a size 12. I love size 12 up fly hooks. And uh, uh, this one's going to be a red tag. So what I use with this is, uh, I mean, you could use red yarn. I think it's traditionally done with a red yarn. Um, I'm going to use like glow bright. This is a uh, size, uh, it's a number four. It's kind of like a red orange. Uh, you could use any kind of like reddish orange as a tag. And for thread, I'm going to be using that black 14 again. I got to switch it up here. And these, all three of these, you can just bang them out. Like you could probably tie in one session, you know, quite a bit. Disposable too. Um, so yeah, black 14 knot. I start always about an eye back and make my way down to the point. Uh, 
and then kind of mark where between the point and the barb. Again, this is kind of like tying into a size 14. So yeah, that glow bright number four. And I snip off one strand and I double it over and then snip it. So now it's two. And then I wrap it around the thread. And you pull it straight up and then you work it down. And that way it's right on the top of the hook. And now all you need to do is wrap back. It's a great way to add tags where the body's uniform. You don't have a bump if you tie it in short. And uh, just overall it makes your fly look a lot better. Uh, it's four strands out the back and I snip it about a hook length. And I fluff it up a little bit with a bigger profile. Uh, now we're going to tie a rib in here. This is just a small gold wire. And I tie it on the side closest to me. And again, about a, where we started that, that tag, the globe, right? And then just cover that in thread wraps, make your way back to the start of the globe, right? And then it's going to be peacock. So it's kind of like imitating that green caddis look. Um, you can use this again, caddis, it's all day, any day. And uh, this is kind of like an all day kind of searching tractor style wet fly. Brook trout love it. Just swing it into any kind of pool. If you want to see if there's fish in a pool, this is the fly to do it with. And um, so, yeah, I just pick off two strands of peacock curl. And I just tie it in, snip off the tips, tie it in at the side closest to me, same as we did with the wire. And tie it about until the hook back, the hook eye back. And then you want to come back and stop it about a hook eye back from the, from the peacock. Leave your thread at the point there. And then we'll rock, wrap that peacock up and use your thread kind of as a, you know, kind of like a meter that, that it keeps them together as you, you work your way up the shank. Peacock gets a little stubborn sometimes, so. This is a great way to kind of tame it. Stop there, right where we stopped all the other stuff. And then just, just snip that off. Couple more security wraps. And then now that gold wire, we're gonna counter wrap it. Super simple, like any nymph you would do. And this just protects that delicate peacock. We'll do about four or five wraps. I find counter wrapping, you can really tell with when you're wrapping it over peacock, you can see the segments a lot better when you counter wrap it. Use your crappy scissors. Snip that off. Bend it down with your back hair nail. Now for the hen again, we're going to use hen. This is kind of like a brown. 
Um, there's like Brahma hens. There's like speckled hens you can use. This is it's kind of like a print sniff kind of hackle. Um, yeah, hens are great substitute. I mean, the soft tackles a lot, like I said, partridge is the go-to, but hens, it's a great substitute. And again, snip that triangle and we're going to tie it in. And with hen, it's pretty easy to preen back kind of after one go, it all cooperates. It's not like partridge. And now we're gonna try and do two or three wraps of this. I'm gonna go a little heavier than I did with the other two because we, we don't have the wing to add. And we'll just tie it off on the bottom. There we go. It's as simple as that. This is a super simple pattern. When I tie in my, yeah, the soft tackles too, you know, at most the the length of the hook, like you don't want to go back past that, the back of the hook. You want it stopping, you know, at the body, end of the body or just a little past. And that's good. You, you know, I, I see too many people when they're tying their wet flies. It, they just, you know, the hackles are way too long. So just try and keep an eye on that. I think that's, you know, one of the biggest things to take out of this is just, you know, make sure your length of hackle is, not too long and just a quick whip. and how do you find that affects how it uh or do you find it affects how it fishes or is it just a, a whack kind of aesthetically sport? yeah i don't i don't know well they're supposed to imitate their legs right and you know for the most part their, their legs aren't extending past their body um you know they're not they're dumb but they're not that dumb so i mean you know you could probably have success on it maybe catch a bunch of brook little brook trout but um I just think, you know, be proportionate with your flies. Um, and uh, I don't know. I, I feel like with that confidence, you, you'll catch more fish. What do you think, Chris? Oh, I agree. For sure. Like, limp's legs aren't that long. But then also, I, I think the longer you get, the more the legs tend to like just slick down and hug the body. Totally. So a little bit shorter, more prickly, kind of stands it out to the side. And, get someone moving in the current a little bit yeah especially with hen like what you were saying before like um hen it's it's super soft and once that gets wet it it, it sticks to the body a lot more than than partridge um so you gotta be aware of that i think you let them flow a little bit more freely uh this pattern man it's just super simple deadly um uh, stock your box box up with them try them out Feel like these flies just don't get enough loving, man. <laughs> you know? Well, especially this one. Like but red tag and now it's a bit plastic and you get. I mean, it's funny, like I think a lot of people have seen, you know, adaptations of this fly and a fly like maybe a blowtorch or a lot of tag nymphs out there, but they aren't aware where it came from, which is, you know, red tag and for browns too, it's a great fly. Totally, totally. Brown yeah. range, so it's not just for aggressive brook tag. Yeah, it's uh well, it's a caddis imitation. So anywhere you get caddis, um, I mean, it could be mayflies too. But I mean, that I think initially that's what it was supposed to imitate. But um, yeah, get it on your line. I think uh, you know this is uh, this is kind of why I wanted to do this seminar is just to bring a little bit more love into the wet flies. I feel like you know Euro nymphs and streamers getting a lot of love, but there's still a you know there's still a place for wet flies, and I spend a lot of time throughout my trout season fish and wet so this is a little bit of a you know a showcase to them so that's awesome really nicely done yeah cool i think that was is the three flies we had tonight right yeah that's just it's just yeah. the three cool. perfect 
don't know if anyone had any last minute questions yeah any there. Questions. so now would be the time but um yeah thanks again mike that was perfect as always and uh hope everyone got something out of that thanks chris yeah i hope everyone got sorry i i forgot to ask you know if anyone had any questions just ask but <laughs> no, flies are pretty straightforward man they were just uh, i wanted to showcase three flies um you know that we uh you know that we could start the year out with and you know i encourage people to get out with them i think uh, you know give some love into the wet flies i know your own nymphs and all that you're you know you'll have success with that but try some wet flies you'd be surprised there's some pretty pretty i've got some pretty big fish on on swinging wets so and fish don't sing, right? like you know that they don't have a flashy beat on them they're being pulled mm -hmm. at a thousand miles an hour like it's just something that fish aren't seeing day in day out right so totally so and there's a reason why you know you know they that's like the epitome of uh of the fly it's like whenever you see a logo of a fly it's a wet fly so there's a reason why there's a reason why that's you know that's what it is so you know get out there people you know tie some wet flies up swing some you know when you have your dry fly rod out it's a great alternative you're waiting for fish to rise or whatever just uh swing some wets or you know they're not going for your your dries swing the wet you know i know we were going to talk about some fishing tactics uh with wets um yeah yeah like um i mean it like says a bunch of ways you can do it but like what i think two my two kind of go to is one would be um fishing it upstream where possible mm. so i'll always have some wets on hand that are actually tied on like dry fly hooks myself mm -hmm. so they're really light and then if i've got you know selected fish or something especially in flats where sometimes there is if you don't lie on top of the water just cast the, the wet fly upstream like a dry and try to stay like a little bit in touch with the fly as it drifts back toward you and um and it just looks like an emerger trap in the film or whatever and that could be a good way to get them and then the other way is fishing and swung then i think people aren't always thinking about how to control the swing it's just like steelhead for me mm -hmm. um there's a, a really solid wet plant angler former member of team canada that um a great article years ago unfortunately i don't think it's around anymore but talking about how to like control the speed so he's a big fan of um shorter leaders that you could control it really well and staying pretty close to yourself it's not like bombing and cast out across the clear staying within like 40 feet of yourself and what he would actually do is um, get out like midstream. If it's a larger pool or wider, he'd actually get out into the middle of the pool, <laughs> um, like at the head of it. And he would start a very short line, like, you know, just lead the length out, hmm. cast to his left, swing it across, cast to his right, swing it across, length by a foot, repeat until you get out to uh, however long, up until like maximum, maybe 30, 40 feet. And then you just start walking down through the middle of the pool. <laughs> then maybe not in every <laughs> circumstance, but in larger rivers where you could, you know, yeah. you speak every fish, it's a great way to comb the water, cover like 80 feet of water without bombing an 80 foot pass. So the problem with that is that at 80 feet, things start moving really quick. And it's hard yeah. to avoid more drags down at the short range yeah totally um yeah i mean and then for tandem i think you know on, on rivers you can use tandem i know you know a lot of people would fish the credit somewhere you can't do that but i think tandem rig is some guys you know they'll fish big big guy too to look up davy watton um uh one of the i think one of the best wet fly tires around uh but he's a good good guy to listen to and watch some of his videos on tying wets uh, but yeah, he talks about just, you know, some, some guys, you'll, you'll use even three wets and, you know, in a, in a line, some, some guys, even more, I think in historically they use a lot more too, but yeah, it's, if you tandem where you can use a couple, um, you know, good spacing between them, each fly, but, um, yeah, just, I don't know that, like you said, great, that's a great, great tip. I, I think I, I'm notorious to, I always try and cast my, my wets way too far. And I think. I'll use that next time I go out. And like, you know, the, the, the bottom line is that like bugs just don't move that fast, apart from like maybe a nice Nikki or something. And yeah, so yeah. It's about like get out there, but then mend and like just like steelhead, like get your rod arm out there, track that fly across the current to really just get moving at like a nice steady kind of pace. 
And the other really good tip for Alan Trust when these things is whenever you're doing it is to keep like a bow of line off the rod tip. So mm -hmm. keep the line tip like a foot or two, maybe more, a few feet off the water surface so that your line actually hangs in like a bow. So the problem is that small fish, they come up behind, even a small fish could be like a, you know, something in the teens, they aren't huge. They come up, they pluck out a fly or whatever. Even if they are big fish, they're just used to not having to put much force into like sucking a little bug in. Mm -hmm. And if you have a perfectly tight line to your fly, you feel the little pluck. The fly doesn't actually suck into the fish's mouth. If you have that little bow of line, it's like a little bit slack in there. A fish can suck it right in, get the hook, and uh, just like any kind of swing and it kind of sets itself. That was a great big tip there. For sure. Yeah, that's a great tip. Uh, you know, you watch, if you watch any of the old, you know, old timers, when they swing their wets, they always do that. They always got a big bow in their line. And there's really a really hard to hook them the other way. Yeah, like, you know, like they've been doing it for a long time. That's a great tip, actually. Uh, but yeah, if you watch any old videos of those old timers fishing wet flies, there's always a bow in their line. It makes sense, yeah. right?